I uh, recently uh, filed an investigation report with the U.S. Post Office due to an interruption in mail delivery at my address. They gave me a number of reasons of why this might be happening, and they all started to revolve around internal compliance issues with their system that actually had nothing to do with me. I was halfway down the path of trying to figure out things I needed to do to comply with their system when I realized that they're the ones that are ruled by compliance, not the people. After receiving my mail at my address for over 30 years, I learned the difference between having my mail delivered and delivering my mail. <clears throat> if you've not been burned yet by the ever-increasing bureaucratic state, then it will be soon. That's why more and more people are standing up and saying, no, enough is enough. Welcome. Welcome to Conservative Coffee Hour. I'm Stanley Smith. At Conservative Hour, we've been trying to make sense out of something that makes no sense. We've been doing this for almost three years. Nobody wants to stand up and rock the boat, but each week, Paul Engel reminds us that if you're going to fight for something important, it's probably going to cost you something. When our country was founded, about 30% of the people engaged in the topic. And of those 30%, 3% actually did something. So what does it cost and who's standing up and who's paying for it? Probably many of the January 6th people are paying the price and people working on election integrity. Many people who ran for office in the last election cycle also paid a price. And members of Congress, Congress who stand up, they also pay a price. Of course, President Trump is the best example of paying a price for being the face of the opposition to the bureaucratic state. Whether you like Donald Trump or not, it's a cautionary tale. Recent polling shows President Trump winning in a landslide in the president, presidential election. This probably has more to do with people's growing dissatisfaction for the government and less to do with whether you like Mr. Trump or not. So where does that leave us? It leaves us looking for that 3% who are actually going to stand up and do something. And what do we want them to do? Jesse Jackson always used to say it's all about education, and that's a good place to start. The gap between simply complaining about something and learning something is usually filled with empowerment and action. Things you can do include forming an assembly in your county and state, serving as an election judge, and running for office. We do realize that we're not going to reform the current operating system from within the system because the current operating system has supplanted our constitutional system. The constitution is designed to constrain the government, not to empower the government to constrain us. But that's exactly where we've been going. When people actually catch on to this, they naturally balk at it. It just takes a little more time for people to get, to get to the top of the bottom of this reality. But we're getting there. It's easy to think of our leaders as reptilian creatures or space aliens, but it's not so. They're just regular people with very limited capacity. We're being governed by constructs that don't even exist. They don't serve humanity. They should and will be eliminated. And then we can have a government that's the right size for humanity. Sounds simple enough. And in this dark and gloomy time, let's be encouraged as we get closer to the top of the bottom and be thankful for those who are standing up and paying the price. We're hopeful that God will meet us halfway down this road that we're traveling on. And the first place is to step up and just say no, enough is enough. If you would like to join us at Conservative Coffee Hour, Conservative Coffee Hour is every Saturday at 10 a.m. Central Time on Zoom. I will include my email in the description of this video. I'll be happy to send you an invitation. And I look forward to seeing you very, very soon.